What's up, guys? John here. It is the day. That's right. It's Saturday. It's the night of the big St. Pete Art and Fashion Show at the Coliseum, presented by and sponsored by, you know who? Tight Medical Center. And you guys are going to see all the great fashions that Tight Medical Center is going to present, along with all the other designers out there, plus a couple extra surprises here or there. So I want you to take a look behind the scenes of what we're doing to prep for this bad boy. And you can be involved from start to finish with Tight Medical Center in our Saturday night art and fashion show. So come take a look. You'll get to see all the girls getting all done up, made up, and all the outfits on them beforehand. And then you'll get to see the final finished polished product. So come along with me and let's see what's going on. I still got to do some work steaming clothes here. I'm not just sitting back relaxing. I'm always involved, guys. So let's go. Alright, so cheers to a wonderful night, another show, a few awesome additions, okay, but cheers to a badass team, I mean a lot of you guys have been around for years, I want to thank all of you guys that have been around for years, have been loyal for years, and have loved us genuinely for years. Cheers! Team All right, guys, that's it. We're all ready to go to the St. Pete Art and Fashion Show. Titan Medical Center is about to bring down the house with all our great fashions, our beautiful models. So get ready for one of the best shows you're ever gonna see. I can guarantee it. Let's roll. Yeah. All right, guys, we are slamming all these beautiful people in this one elevator, and as you can see, the Titans always take over. Wherever we're at, whatever we're doing, you can guarantee all eyes are going to be on us, either because we're so good looking, or we look the best, or we're the biggest best, I don't know, but we're going to be here taking over bigger, badder, and better every time. So we are off to the fashion show. We've got all the models in here. The Titan Sprinter limo is ready to rock and roll. We've got another Uber driver behind us because we got all the big guys in back of us. Big Drew, Rodney, all fit. those guys. <laughs> Could not fit everybody in here. So that's okay. We're rolling and controlling. Uh, the Titan bus is on the way. Here at the Coliseum, we're just getting out of the Sprinter limo. We're about to go inside and rock this Titan fashion show.
What's up guys, John here from Titan, and today I wanna to talk to you about things that could be possibly ruining your testosterone. That's right, day in and day out, you might be damaging those levels or lowering your testosterone levels and not even know it. So let's talk about some of the most common things that you could be doing to be damaging your testosterone levels. One, things we eat. Everything you're in taking your body, we are what we eat. Remember that saying? That saying is so true. And you could be eating things day in and day out that could be lowering your testosterone levels or not be putting them in a good place. That's one. The second one, talk about sleep. Sleep is so vital for day in and day out activity, the way you feel, your mood. And yes, it can affect your testosterone levels if you're not getting enough sleep. So make sure you're trying to prioritize seven day eight hours of sleep to make sure your testosterone levels and you're functioning properly day in and day out. Three, medications you may be taking. This could be narcotics or painkillers. This could be depression medication. This can also be hair loss medication too as well. All of these things could be damaging or lowering your testosterone levels. So make sure that you're looking at the, the side effects from these medications to know what you're really in for because some of these medications could possibly go away, even depression medications. Now, there are people out there that legitimately need depression medications, but some of those people may be put on depression medications because they had low testosterone levels and that could possibly cause depression. And a medical provider didn't blood test, but it just went by the symptoms of what the patient said and automatically put them on this medication and this is damaging them day in and day out. Next one. Activity. If you're inactive all the time and sitting on the couch all the time, your body is being useless. Our bodies were not meant for that. Our bodies were meant to be active. They were meant to go out, hunt, right? See, feel, touch, experiment, everything that's going on in the world. They're not there just to sit and be inactive. And by sitting and being active, think about a car or anything else that is inactive. After sitting there for so long, it's not gonna run as good. You want to constantly be running your body and being active so that your body is performing and it's working like it should, okay? The next thing after that, when we talk about this, we talk about how testosterone levels can be lowered by head trauma, okay? That's another one, day in and day out. So if you're getting a lot of hits to the head, okay, you might be experiencing low testosterone levels because of it. TBIs, traumatic brain injury. This happens to so many soldiers out there or other people out there. And usually what happens is, is a pituitary gets wrecked or something happens and their body starts not producing testosterone or like it should. This will also cause lower levels of testosterone in the body. Okay. Next one, our environment and what we're putting on our bodies. So every day you're, you're going out into chemical warfare, whether you know it or not. You're like, John, what are you talking about? I go outside and I breathe fine. Yeah, you're breathing fine, but think about everything that's in there, all the toxins are in our environment, everything you're breathing in. Microplastics are actually in our bloodstream. They've confirmed this, okay? This is affecting our body in so many different ways and we really don't even know. We are truly an experiment walking around with all the other things that are around us and what we're intaking. After that, what we're putting on our body. There are different chemicals you're putting on your body every single day, and I do too, so I'm right there with you guys. So deodorants, lotions, sunscreen. You're saying sunscreen, but I have to wear sunscreen. I live, in, I live in Florida. I need it all burned. There are some sunscreens out there that have carcinogenics in them. Now they're starting to take them out of the stores because they're starting to find this out, but still a lot of people have used these things for so long or even deodorants. That's right, I put on deodorant too because I don't want to stink, but I'm telling you guys, there's different chemicals in there that could be endocrine disrupting chemicals, EDCs, and this could be affecting your hormone levels and particularly your testosterone levels. So these are just some of the common things you're, you're dealing with day in and day out that could be ruining or lowering your testosterone levels. And who wants that, right? Nobody does. I'd like to keep my natural testosterone levels for as long as I possibly can. Now my natural testosterone levels, uh, you know, bottomed out probably about 31, 32 years old where they were not optimal and they were really at the lower end. So I've been on testosterone replacement therapy, hormone replacement therapy for that long, now 41 years old. But I can tell you this, I feel better than ever. I definitely look at what I eat, 
how much rest I'm, you know, I'm doing. I try not to take in any medications that are gonna be uh, disrupting my hormones or lowering those levels too as well. But I'm also substituting and implementing testosterone in my body. So I don't really have to worry about it getting low because I have it covering my body. But people out there that are not on hormone replacement therapy or don't wanna start just yet, you really need to look at these other factors, right? Get those in check and maybe your levels can stay naturally higher for a longer period of time, okay? So, it's up to you guys. I'm gonna put the homework and the ball in your court. Do what you guys gotta do. Find out and research what you're intaking, how you're doing it, and the surrounding things around you, and do what's best for your health and your testosterone levels. I hope this helped. Stay tuned for the next video because I'm gonna be covering a lot more information I think you guys are gonna love. It will benefit your health day in and day out. Thank you guys. Call or text if you want to become a patient, 727-389-3220, and check out all the therapies that we offer at tightmedicalcenter.com. Appreciate you guys, and see you in the next video. What's up guys, John here. I'm Sharice. And we're back with another Cupid's Corner. That's right, every week, me and my beautiful wife here, Sharice, are bringing you guys good tips, tricks, and things that will hopefully enhance, entice, and improve your relationship or future relationship if you're not in one currently. So this should help guys and girls out in all these situations that you might be coming through. And you know what, if you've been dating out there, it's not so easy. It never has been, but I think it's harder than ever. And I haven't been in the dating game for almost 14 years now. So I'm really out of touch as far as that goes. Yeah. But yeah, I'll never be in the dating game ever again. I do live vicariously <laughs> through all my friends and what they tell me and all the things that they have went through, currently going through, or just things that they say is out there that I think is just absolutely insane or crazy. Slightly abnormal. But that is the environment that we're living in, that you're living in. So we got to adapt to it and hopefully get over and overcome and find love in all the right places and not the wrong ones. Mm -hmm. So let's get it on today. So this one, I guess, is good for anybody that's getting into the dating game. And like I said, I haven't been in a long time, but it's a pretty good way to start, I guess, any date. And that's the top three questions you would ask on your date. Now, I'm sure my questions will be a little bit different than Sharice's questions are gonna be. And I guess in the scenario that you're gonna be in, the questions might change, right? So we were talking about this earlier, like where, you know, if you're going on a date and you're just going to date to date per se, or grind or whatever is out there. Tinder. Tinder Binder, or whatever. Um, you know, those questions might be a little bit different on your first date because you're really not looking for love, right? You're well, just like, hey, have you ever had an STD? Uh, have you ever had this go on? Oh. Those are the serious questions you're gonna ask if you're swiping to the left and you really don't care, oh, right? Oh man. Let's be oh, realistic, man. guys. Oh, Come on, wow. I'm the realist. I'm gonna take, I'll take full credit for that. <laughs> You know, I'm the one that's going to tell you how it is. And you guys know yeah. that if you're the swipers, you're going to want to know that answer. Now, what you ask, that's a whole other question. You might not get the right <laughs> truthful answer, even if you ask the right questions. Right. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about... So you know, what, what are yours? What are yours? Well, are if it's a romantic type thing. I want to know, just generally speaking. And who cares if it was romantic or well, not, Well, I mean, right? if, I, if I'm looking for... Like, if, if yeah, it's, like if you're going like to be on like date? a real date, yeah. Okay, so a real date, right? I'm gonna ask a couple questions that I can find out some things about the girl um, to go on to lead into more questions or to find out, you know, what some of their likes are. So obviously, you know, what do you like to do? Because what do you Thank like God to it wasn't do? Your, what's your favorite color? I feel like that's no, like no. The, what, the, what's your favorite <laughs> color? I think is six yeah, months in. Yeah, I think that's like down the road. Like you know, you want to learn more about your partner. That's another like what you know, your hobbies are. Is that what you're saying? Well, no. What do you like to do? What do you like to do for fun? So when you're not working, right? What do you like to do for fun? Is it going out to the movies? You like to go out to the beach if you live in Florida? Um, you like to work out or exercise? Like. You know some sort of things that you really like to do like some people are into comic books some people are into jewelry some people are into fashion you know there's all these different things that you really don't know like you can't judge a book by its cover because i can go up to somebody and think and stereotype 
well, I, I think they're like this and that. And then you ask them these questions and it's totally different from what I may have perceived. Mm. Right? True. You know, so you really can't judge a book by its cover. So, like, I know, like, when me and Sharice first started dating, she didn't think I liked hip-hop music or new hip-hop music and stuff like that. And so she actually heard me, like, singing some songs. She's like, oh, my God. I, like, yeah. Like, I oh like all God, forms of music, Oh, my God. You like rap right? music? I like all forms of music, except for country. <laughs> Just hate me or love me. I'm it not doing country either, sorry. But I'm not a country person. Even though I rode horses and did all this stuff growing up, I don't like country music. It just it, it doesn't do it for me. Oh. Um, and that's okay if you do, too, <laughs> because everybody should like everything different. Exactly. Or it's totally up to you what you like and don't like. Um, so at that point, you know, I'm going to ask what, what they like to do, right? Because that's going to lead me on to talk about something, you know, what they like or what maybe we more both topics, like. More topics, I guess, right? yeah. More topics or future date, yeah. right? You get that information. A non-future you date. Know, right? You, you put it in the, the, the memory banks and then you know, like, oh, well, she, wants, she likes to go horseback riding. She likes to go whatever it uh, is. He likes to play video games. Uh, we're not going on another date. Right, right. Well, you, I mean, <laughs> you go to Dave & Buster's. So, you know, there's, there's, I love Dave Buster's. See, and you can play video games and you can have some liquor if you want to. You can eat there. You know, whatever you want. Maybe you're dating some girl who has kids. and Yeah, that would be my first question is, do you have baggage? And I'm not talking about the luggage you take on a plane. I would want to know if you yeah. have children. I mean, that, that honestly, I, I mean, before I met John, that, that was a deal breaker for me. Is that the first question you ask? Um, yes. Okay, so you guys meet, or like, so when you're on the phone, you're like, oh, we go out with me or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. That's how it used to be, I don't know. So you go out with me, yes, okay, I'll pick up at 7 p.m. Right, yep. so pick them up at 7 p.m. You're in the car. How's driving. your day going? What, how, how, what's going on with you? You know, you have the typical conversation. And you really, truly, well, I find my way to get this answer no matter what, because this will judge whether the date is going to be 30 minutes or the date will, might, might last the whole night, right? Oh, wow. Because that would be a deal breaker. You would figure you'd want some of the deal breaker questions to try to get out as soon as possible. Yeah. So you're not wasting time, right? Because you can't get time back. Yeah. So why waste time? I mean, unless they're just a good person and it might be a cool friend down the line, that right. might be a different story. Right, right. But that's gonna be one of the very first questions I'm gonna get out of you. Like, you know, I don't have, so have you ever been married before? Like, have you, have you ever had any kids? Or These are pretty like serious that? questions right after that though. Right? I, I would love to know. Right. You're, I'm gonna find out. <laughs> Second question I would say is, you know, what do you like to eat? You know, what's your favorite food, right? Because that's setting up dinner or maybe we're going out somewhere and hopefully the menu has that on it. That would probably be my second question off the bat. That's so nice. I would be, I would, I would know, the, you know, what, what your likes, dislikes are right, right off the bat. What do you want to eat? Because everybody has to eat, right? Whether it's a guy or a girl, everybody has to eat no matter what. Um, and you can kind of choose based off that and kind of go go to some place maybe they have everything that you like and they like and you're, you're good right instead of like somebody saying i'm a vegetarian and i take them to a steakhouse <laughs> now they, they might, have veggies they have they have some stuff um, but you know it's just like oh man Oops. i hate meat now you took me around meat like it's just a deal breaker for them like so it is what it is um third question i would say what are you looking for right like, what are you looking for? Are, you know, are, are that's a pretty in-depth question, I believe. Well, I mean, I think that's that's a good question to go off of. I mean, because you know, like, hey, are you looking, you know, dating or you know, you know, everything like that? I would stay away from questions about exes. I, I don't, I don't think that's a good one to talk about on the first date because you're always going back to talking about your ex and negative stuff. I'd like to stay in the positive realm. You know, I think the positivity needs to flow, and then yeah. later on in the relationship. You know, you can kind of... I, I do all, it's gonna the, come up, right? all the very serious questions, I certainly get out right away. So my next question would probably be... I don't be, think she ever asked me if I had kids or if I've been married. I, no, I, I knew he didn't have kids. Oh, she knew. I already did background check on John. Oh, she knew. I already knew. I already knew. Watch out. Now. I knew. I knew. So, and listen, if, if you're able... If you know a friend of a friend of a friend that knows the person that you might like or that you think about might you might want to date... You might start asking some questions, so maybe you can. You don't have to ask the question, right? Unless they have some, you know, family that they have uh, hiding in some other state or something you don't know about. Yeah, I see. But um, the next question I would personally ask is, you know, like, what do you do for a living? You know what I mean? I, I would love to know what do you do for a living, and I could really care less. It's not really like a money question. It's more or less like, what do you do for a living? Like, what that's gonna that's gonna kind of show like, all right, how many hours are you working a day? Are you working from home? Are you working at work? Are you on a truck? You know, oh, how many people are you around? This, I mean, I I would want to know what you do for a living. 
That yeah. would make that would that would I would want to know that in the first date. Yes. I mean, I think in the first date I would ask that question too. Yeah, like, right. What like, do you, what do you what do? You do, you do? What do you? Because, how, how many people do you meet and you're like, so what do you do? I mean, you can even be at a bar, right, and be like, so what do you do for a living? You know, it's just, it's like it, it is a very I, yeah. I think a very common question. It's a very common question, um, and you know, I don't know how I feel about the question anymore because like just yesterday, right, I'm sitting at the house and I've got like, you know, we're brand new house, we've got all these contractors coming in, still, <sighs> it's like six contracts. And literally, like, they'll come in, they'll see this stuff around, like, the cars and stuff like that. And that's the first question I ask me, man, what do you do? Well, like, that's, I, a that's a different That's a different setup. I tell them, like, That's but, a different setup, a different story. But, you know, but, but do grow the same way, right? Like, you drive, like, this, this fancy-ass car or whatever it is. Like, what do you do? Do they ask that to some guy that's driving, like, a Nissan Maxima or whatever it is? Well, let's, let, let, let me ask a question, right, from a, a girl's perspective. And maybe it is a guy's perspective, right? If you were on a date or going on a date with a girl, right? Would you want to know if she was maybe a dancer? Would you want to know that? I mean, I, I think, you know, you, you want to get in the conversation of what they do for a living. Because, we want to get that out. Like, well, you you know, want to know. You know, I, I think, I I think know. that's something that you do want to find out about somebody because, you know what, there's different things that people don't like, right? There's people have different morals, ethics, boundaries. And, um, you know, one person might have different boundaries than the other person does. And that's just not going to mix with the other person per se. Right. So like here in Florida, if you know, you get approached by, let's say a swinger, right. And you're not into that lifestyle, right? Uh, then you're probably uh, not going to go pretty, pretty well there. It's going to be two different thinking, or you might go into that. Who knows? But you know, not until you ask these questions, are you really going to find out? And this is why you ask those questions. It's key. It really is key to ask, you know? So. <laughs> Just think about this when you're going on your, your dates, your relationships, you know, where, you, where you're trying to, to break the ice. You know, you want to ask some of these questions because you want to find out more about them, if it's going to be a right fit for you and what you're looking for. And, you know, what you're looking for and you find might be totally different. You might be happy about that. You never know until you get in the situation. But you need to know that information to start somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. So these are just some <laughs> tri tips, tricks, and things that will help you guys out down the road. If you have to have, go on a date or whatever it is, make sure you find out information about them, maybe about their past and you stuff You know, it's like right, that. though. John is so right. I must say this before we end the show, right? I, I for sure, I thought John was a DJ when I met him. I did. He, I mean, he wore his hat like it was cocked to the side, and you know, he looked like you know. Was, I mean, I, he just, I, I, I don't know where I got that from, right? But I didn't ask the question, and that's not what he did for a living. Yeah. All right, guys, <laughs> we gotta go. Thank you guys for tuning in to Cupid's Corner. Check us out every Sunday at 11 a.m. on ABC, or you guys can DVR it or go to YouTube and type in Tight Medical Center and see all the great shows that we have to offer you guys. I'm John. I'm Sharif. We'll see you guys next Sunday on the Cupid's Corner. See you then.